Hello, I'm Dr. Patrick Porter and welcome to the Light and Sound Vibration as a tool for eliminating stress. I'm going to share with you some of the latest breakthroughs we've had in using light and sound and how it affects the body and whether you're a practitioner using this in your clinic or if you're an end user, you're going to find benefit in how you can use this what we call progressive relaxation and light and sound technology so that you can improve the quality of your nervous system and improve the quality of your life. I start here with this slide and here in the United States, when you go to the grocery store, you're gonna see at least 50% of the magazines in the grocery store are gonna have the cover of the brain on it. That's because right now we are an aging population on earth. We had a, a period of time in the United States, they call it the baby boomers. And that was right after World War II when everyone was being you know, born now that group of people is so large that there's a fear factor it used to be in the world. The biggest fear in the world was fear of public speaking. Now we know the fear is losing your memory and being a burden to your family. So I want to encourage you to listen because your brain can improve at any age, regardless of what people have told you, you have the technology available to you to keep your brain functioning, your memories intact and your health to be at a peak because of technology today, what we call biohacking. When we talk about that, there's something called biohacking and something called brain hacks. I'm gonna be talking about brain hacks because right now, stress is hijacking your health. And David Asprey has been, he's coined the term biohacking. So what I'm gonna be talking about is how in our world that we live in right now, our brain and body are in sync with nature. So there's things that we do naturally, and if we let nature take its course, unfortunately what happens because of toxins, there's three reasons people have uh, problems with their brain. It's thoughts, traumas, or toxins. So it could be their thoughts are interrupting their health and their vitality of their body. It could be toxins, meaning that the brain isn't detoxing and they're eating toxic foods and the environment is toxin. There's a lot of ways that we get toxins into our body. And it could be trauma. Most of you watching this might not know this, but every person between the age of one and five years old falls down between 2,000 and 5,000 times, depending upon how active you are. Each time you fell down, your body, your brain, got a little bit of damage done to it. And now how your brain remodeled around that damage as a child really created the personality you have today. Now, when we're younger, we have a lot more stem cells, a lot more uh, repairability. So as we get better looking and more intelligent with age, we don't have the same recuperative powers. So we have to use what science is giving us today. And that's what we're going to talk about. But the number one thing that I want to encourage you to do is realize that brain stress is the silent killer. And there's a lot of reasons that happen. Some people actually add stress to their life by like turning on the news. Now, I'm not one to say don't, don't check out what's going on in the world around you but you should be tuning into the news only to find out what's happening today, but don't be consumed by the news. Listen to it, be informed, but also do your own research because a lot of our news, unfortunately, is propaganda. They sell magazines, they sell uh, advertising on the TV and on the radio because unfortunately, humans were more prone to gravitate towards something negative, towards something positive but these things are all causing stress and all that stress is brain stress. And that's what I'm gonna to explain today. You can do something about that stress that's affecting your body because even though we feel it up here, I mean, we feel it in our body, it's all happening right up here. So we wanna teach you to disassociate from the stress so you can be in the world, but not of the world. You don't have to let the world affect you. You can overcome that. Now, stress goes to the weakest point. So let's say that you have a bad heart if you have stress, there's a reason here in the United States, Monday morning, there's more heart attacks on Monday morning than any other day of the week. That tells you that it's a psychological problem. People don't look forward to their job. In fact, it's been said that over 80% of the people in the United States don't like what they're doing for a living. So the best thing you can do for your health is start preparing for your new vocation. So whatever that is, as long as you're working toward a goal and you have a way to get out of the current situation you're in, you're going to be much better off and have much more energy. Now, also I wanna point out, 
your stress is affecting your genes, which means it's affecting how you show up. When you go to bed and you get a good night's sleep and you're rested and relaxed, you've actually turned on genes for health, harmony, and vitality in your body. Now, if you went to bed stressed and you wake up stressed, you've also turned on genes that are going to destroy your body or cause a propensity for you maybe to gain weight or to drink alcohol. Whatever the reason is, there's actually studies that show that when you reduce stress, you can turn on and off those genes that cause you to be addicted. So think about it. You have the power of thought to change the way your body shows up, whether it's with addictions and relationships with your family. And by the way, those genes that you're turning on and off, they're affecting your family because now in science, they've proven that these genes have receptors on them that transmit and receive information. And there's something in the quantum field that, they call, that we call quantum entanglement. It happens in the family level. They have proven that seven generations forward and seven generations backwards are affecting who you are right now. They're playing into your gene, genealogy. That's why some people say, I have a family history of depression. I have a family history of being stressed. You can change that. You can be the person that breaks that chain. And if you read my book, which you, you're all going to be given access to for free without a credit card, you're going to be able to download my book at the end of this presentation. You're going to learn about my family. My dad got help. He was a very gifted alcoholic. When he got help, he helped his family. We're very fortunate. There's nine of us in our family. Statistically speaking, seven of us should have been alcoholics. But the reality is we only have one. And that one he goes on and off the wagon because he doesn't believe fully. You've got to commit 100%. You can't commit halfway to your health because whether it's the food you're consuming, the thoughts that you're thinking, the activity you're taking part in, they're going to affect you on a physiological level and even in the gene structure of your body. So remember, you're not subject to your parents' genealogy either. Bruce Lipton who is probably the, the major voice out there for epigenetics, he says that 80% of who you are can be changed. Only 20% is controlled by your family, by your heritage. So your, the place you live, the books you read, the people you hang out with, <clears throat> these all are going to influence how your genes represent themselves. What I want to show you here, this is the brain hack we're talking about. When you look at this spectrum brainwave activity, we have a piece of equipment at BrainTap where we can measure the nervous system by putting clips on the, on the wrist, getting a five minute evaluation, 300 heartbeats. In the space between those heartbeats, there's a lot of information. In fact, it's called quantum um, mathematics. And what it's doing, it's talking about our body and how we can figure out, this is something called ECG, meaning the heart, your heart itself, has 40,000 neutrino cells, which means you have a heart brain, 40,000 cells. That brain communicates to the brain in your head two times more than the brain in your head communicates with your, with your heart. We also have a gut brain, which we're gonna be talking about too, because your gut actually has more neuron connections, more gray matter than the brain does. So as we think about these three different brains, we can now record them, show you in real time what's happening. So this is somebody's brain, and this, is, this isn't even as bad as it gets, because when we go to conferences, we would show up those conferences, we would evaluate doctors or, or practitioners that were there, and we found that over 90% of those people being evaluated were in either like this, their highest brainwave activity while they were awake was Delta. Now, that's not good. These different brainwave states, beta represents wide awake, efficient. So what this should look like is this. And this after is after they did a 20 minute session using light, sound and vibration, the brain bounced back. And I'm gonna be explaining why that is. When you look at the, the after photo here, the beta is about 42, an optimum brain is 45. Alpha is 26, the optimum brain is 30. So this person, after one session of using light, sound, and vibration, was able to get their brain back in balance. But also notice how they were able to bring that delta down. That delta being high tells me two things. One, there's either been brain trauma, or two, they have a lot of inflammation in the body. 
and most people will tell you the cause of all of our diseases is caused by inflammation. Now, inflammation in the brain, we're going to discuss that. So you can start to work on getting rid of that inflammation and getting your brain to work best. The, the one on the left, the before, that's somebody who's tired. They're going to run around all day stimulating with coffee or other stimulants, chocolate, whatever they need, because they're going to have to jack up their body using some kind of food to do that. But we have an electrical system. That's our brain. That is infinite. We have all the energy we need as long as we are in that beta alpha state that we're showing here. That's the best state for being awake. Now for meditating, you're gonna to wanna to see more theta and alpha, but this we're talking about now is in an everyday state, <clears throat> how does your brain represent? Now, this is a study done in India by a high school student. So this is how easy it is to use light, sound, and vibration. And the tool they used was called BrainTap. That's a piece of equipment that I invented. They took students, and they, they did a pre and post and brain speed. Now what brain speed means is neuroplasticity. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. But neuroplasticity means that your brain can change at any age. But what we showed in this study, this research study in, in this high school senior uh, actually won an award at a conference, beat out some pretty, pretty heavy duty uh, doctors from Ames Institute, from GIMS, the Government Institute of Medical Sciences, because she showed that using light, sound, and vibration, the algorithm that we created at BrainTap, we were able to increase brain speed with just one session. That brain speed means that we can process the processing power. When you get a new computer, the reason you're getting a new computer over the old computer is you want a computer that processes faster, that crunches numbers and data, that gives you recalls back uh, screen rates much faster. That's what neuroplasticity is. We're gonna teach you that you can speed up and improve your brain function at any age. And we have study after study that shows this. Now, why can't you fix this on your own? When you think about your brain and what's happening, and I'm just gonna talk about the four primary brain waves. When we think about the frontal lobes, this is the front part of the brain. It represents 40% of your brain. Now, when most people meditate, what happens is that frontal lobe goes to sleep because as soon as we close our eyes, our subconscious, which runs 95% of our show, which means 5% is your conscious mind, but your subconscious is really running it. <clears throat> when this frontal lobe is damaged, it's gonna stop the dopamine production, which is the reason we have all the addictions right now, most of the common addictions we have, whether it be alcohol, drugs, uh, pornography, whatever it is, they're all dopamine responses. In fact, if you're watching me and you keep checking your phone, because you wanna know if you've got an email or a text. If you check your phone on average, like the average person checks their phone over 150 times a day, you have an addiction. That's called mophobia, mobile phone phobia. You're afraid to be without your phone, without your connection, without your lifeline. And every time you send a text and you get one back, you're getting a dopamine hit. Now, if that part of the brain gets damaged, you can't create dopamine you can't think logically because that's the part of your brain that, that produces the most beta brain waves. Now, these brain wave states are in every area of the brain, but the primary place is right there. And that frontal lobe is what sends the signal to your gut that says, hey, make dopamine. Now, and, and as we go through this, so you can't just tell the brain to do that. You have to be in these physiological states. The next is the temporal lobes. When you look at that area of the brain, if that area of the brain gets damaged, you're not going to produce HGH, which means you're not going to burn fat. Now, the problem with this is when you're in a chronic state of constant low-level stress, which right now, almost every person on earth is functioning in a chronic state of low-level stress. We call this uh, the neurological survivor syndrome. So you're trying to survive, but your body is in this fight or flight all the time. When that happens, you prevent yourself from going into alpha and you prevent your body from creating acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is necessary to build muscle, to communicate, to have cognitive thoughts. So if you've ever, when you're stressed out, that's why you can't make good decisions. So we wanna train the brain and get the brain working best. Now your brain needs all of these different brain waves. There's not one brain wave that's better than any other because it's state dependent. We call it, uh, Frequency switching technology. That's really what we're focusing on. Now, the parietal lobes has to do with theta, theta waves and GABA. 
So if you don't get into theta, which is this is the problem that happens with most adults that are watching this. One in three people are having trouble sleeping at night. Two out of three people sleep less than six hours every night. To put this in perspective, 100 years ago, the average person slept 12 hours. <clears throat> so we're not getting the restorative sleep, but it's not about time. And I'm going to talk about that in a, on a different slide later on in the presentation. The reality is that there's more to it than just time in bed. It has to do with the regulation of these different neurohormonal systems. So if you don't have enough alpha, you could be considered autistic because we're finding that most autistic brains that we scan are lacking alpha or have very little alpha activity. So as soon as we stimulate alpha, they start speaking again, they start having more fun. Acetylcholine makes you feel good. GABA, which is produced by theta brain waves, GABA has to do with helping you get into that restorative sleep, that deep sleep. Right now in the pharmaceutical industry, the biggest thing there are researching right now, besides COVID, which is happening, is GABA, because GABA is going to promote sleep. And with so many people out there in the world not sleeping well, if they can find a drug that can do it, the problem is that your brain doesn't like synthetic neurotransmitters. In fact, sleeping medicine has been proven to only give you five minutes of actual sleep. Even though you think you're sleeping, that state of sleep is not really sleep. It's not restorative sleep. It's not restful sleep. We need to get the body and brain to regulate efficiently so you can move through the sleep cycle because sleep is your superpower. When you wake up after a good night's sleep, you have all this energy. If you don't, it feels like somebody slipped a kryptonite rock in your pocket and you strained your energy through the day. Now, the occipital lobe, which is the back of the head, which usually gets damaged when we're kids, that has to do with delta. So that's the inflammation that's showing up. It also has to do with producing the uh, serotonin. When, when people, you would think if they had that much delta going, they'd have a lot of serotonin. But the problem with most of the drugs that are being prescribed today, the SSRIs, which are serotonin uptake inhibitors, they're actually trapping serotonin in the brain. That's not good. Our body works in a cyclic nature. It wants the serotonin for today, for this moment. The, everything is cyclic in our body. And it's not just women, guys out there. Everybody, that means my body, your body, everybody has a cycle. And we need to move through these cycles. And your sleep cycle is key to functioning, for your brain to function correctly and to trigger these neurotransmitters. And I'm gonna go into it in just a little bit. Now, what we did, we did a study with, with weightlifters and we created a series that's called the Mind Muscle Connection. It was featured in a magazine called Iron Man, which uh, the person who really made this process really famous was Arnold Schwarzenegger because he, he proved that when you're relaxed and you're visualizing your muscles getting bigger and stronger, you actually at the Mind Muscle Connection, right where they bind, you're building more muscle and stronger. So the reality is, that if you are more relaxed, more comfortable, at peace with yourself while you're working out, you're gonna build more muscle, you're gonna be stronger and healthier than if you're stressed out. We all know people that go to the gym and they're there every day and they're doing aerobic workouts. They just keep working, 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 and they actually get bigger and bigger and bigger because aerobic workout doesn't build muscle. Our body needs muscle for our brain to function. So resistance training is key for you to be healthy in mind and body. Now I'm not saying don't do aerobic workouts, but do your bodybuilding first, because that's, you wanna use the muscle, the, the sugar that's in the muscles to build the muscle, then you're gonna cool down by doing some aerobic training, walking, riding a bike, doing a Stairmaster, whatever you're doing, that's okay, but only do it for 20 to 30 minutes. If you burn, if you lift weights, then you're gonna tap into stored fat. But if you do aerobic first, you, you tap into the stored fat, now there's no sugar left to build your muscle. So it seems counterintuitive. You wanna warm up just enough to get the muscles warm, but then start doing some kind of lifting, some resistant training to build that muscle. And of course, if you want a copy of the Mind Muscle, the biohacking article that we wrote, all you have to do is contact our office and we'll send you a copy of the Ironman article, especially if you're a weightlifter, you might wanna read that. And, and get some benefits from it. 
Now, if you're in sports, what we find is light and sound and vibration is neuroprotective. What do I mean by that? Neuroprotective means that your brain can set itself up. So we know like in this sport, this is a professional soccer team using uh, brain tap in a, their recovery room, that after you're done working out, if you can keep your brain relaxed, and I'm gonna go into why that is with the blood flow, the circulation, the nitric oxide release, and in how we get the, keep the body doing it, but it's a way to protect the brain. Don't wait till you have an injury. The reality is that as we get better looking and more intelligent with age, our brain, the blood flow to our brain is being compromised. If we're not sleeping through the night, our body is being compromised. So I wanna talk about that. So what they found was that when you recover, like these people, we know that if you use light, sound, and vibration in the afternoon, you can reclaim up to 80% of the energy of the body. And I'm gonna talk about what light, sound, and vibration does in just a moment. <clears throat> So when we think about light, this is an example of someone, she's sitting in the chair, she's using light. Not only she, there's a wrap that she wears, she's wearing the brain tap, she's wearing the gut pad because your gut brain, your brain, light is going to be needed to create ATP. ATP is the currency of the body. Without ATP, you cannot heal. Light is the trigger. And light has been said is the most underprescribed nutrient on earth. And unfortunately, they've now proven you can't even get enough if you're outside all day. These bodies that we have were designed to be outside when the sun is shining, not inside our cars, not inside our homes all day, meant to be outside in the sunlight, getting full spectrum light. But also science shows us, and the ancients in India knew this, that in the morning, there's actually a two hour time period to get infrared light an infrared light is the most healing, regenerative light possible. That's why morning is such a special time. And if you can watch a sunset or a sunrise, you're getting access to those wonderful rays of light that actually can reset your gut biome. You heard me right. Light has been proven to reset your gut biome, which means your brain-gut connection is directly linked to the frequency light of our sun. So we can hack that by providing that light in the form of LED light flashed at a certain frequency. And I'm gonna explain that in just a moment. So we talk about sound, I'm gonna go into that, and vibration. When you use these three together, like what she's doing, we call it stacking your hacks. Once you stack your hacks, you're going to get what's called neuroplasticity. Now they also call it neurogenitive respect. So what happens is your body, you cannot bring back neurons that have died but you can create new neurons. And we know you can create new neurons through light, sound, and vibration. You can create new neurons through exercise and proper nutrition. So all of these things, and they also know that your brain can be healed at any age. When we think about this cycle, we have light, which is photons. That equals energy. So let's imagine when we put our headset on, we're gonna have lights in the eyes and lights in the ears. This light is actually uh, being absorbed by the hemoglobin. Your eyes are not just attached to your brain. Your eyes are your brain. So as that light in the form of photons goes into the bloodstream, the hemoglobin absorbs that light, circulates through the body. That energy is produced, it's producing ATP. The regenerative power works like this. It goes into the body, binds the cells of the body that are dying. They call this apoptosis. So once they, it finds a cell that's dying, that dying cell, the mitochondria, acts as a magnet. It attracts photons. Once that photon is absorbed into that dying cell, that mitochondria kicks back up, the Krebs cycle starts, the instruction set of the cell is given, the cell comes back to life. In fact, there was research in the 70s that showed that Harvard kept a chicken heart alive for 35 years. As long as they kept it clean, kept it with nutrients, they figured they stopped the experiment because they could have kept the heart alive forever. Now this chicken heart was not attached to anything. So that says the cells have their own intelligence. So our bodies, think of our body like a community of cells. They're all communicating and working together, but each cell has its own identity. It has, has its own instruction set. 
So we need to provide each cell system and organ, which the nutrients it needs, give it a pathway to get rid of the toxins and drink plenty of clean, fresh water and eat foods that are filled with energy and vitality. The more you eat water-based, vibrant, light-based foods like fresh fruits and vegetables, the better your body is going to function. Most people, this is what happens. This is how biohacking, when people go, why do you use flashing lights or what we call retinal flashing? The science is actually called frequency following response. So this, this is what happened. Let's say you and I go to the ocean. We sit down, we're relaxing, we're having a great talk. You might even get tired and fall asleep because your brain, our nervous system is adaptive. 70% of our nervous system is in our brain. So what happens with this adaptive nervous system is the ocean is there, it's resonating as a frequency. It's actually an isochronic tone generator. The planet itself is in different regions of the planet have different frequency responses. The, the ocean happens to have a frequency response of 10 hertz frequency, that's alpha. So we immediately start to feel the acetylcholine release. We immediately begin to feel relaxed and our body mim mimics that because we're always adjusting to our environment. That's a good thing. Now you might wonder why the mountains for gurus. When a guru goes there, they go into the cave, they start meditating. That's because the mountains are resonating at 7.8 hertz frequency. That happens to be theta. They don't have to go anywhere. They just close their eyes. The nervous system will actually mirror that. If you've ever been to the tree line of a mountain and just got outside, rested, relaxed, looked at it, it was beautiful. That's because your brain is now creating the acetylcholine and the GABA. You're getting a rush of, basically, you're getting high on your own supply. But unfortunately, if we don't do any, if we don't get out into nature, we don't do these things, we live in this world, a busy city. Most cities actually function between 16 and 22 hertz frequency. That's a high level of stress and anxiety. That's the beta state. That's the fight or flight. And I mean, I've known people actually, I, we, I took a, a staff member with me when I was living in San Francisco to New York City. She only made it one day. She got violently sick because she lived on a horse ranch outside of San Francisco. She was used to being out in nature, just relaxing all the time. When she was in New York City, it just felt like it was caving in on her. She, she, we had to send her home. She was just, she could not handle the frequencies. And there is a, there is a reality that 20 to 25% of the people out there can't handle the environmental stresses that come in the form of G5 and other electronic smog that's out there. So if you're one of those people, there is technology that can help you this isn't the course for it, but there is technology that can do it. So don't worry, we, if there is a technological problem, there's gonna be a technological solution. You just have to look for that solution and be willing to use it. But it's important to understand that our body works on the principle of frequency following response. Now, this is a good friend of mine. He wrote a book, his name is Dr. Kelly Miller. It's about neuroplasticity and how the brain works. He did a study, he did a pilot study that's now being taken into a bigger study down in Brazil at some of the universities there. And what we found was we took women, 55 to 65. These women all were tested for dementia. They all, they all had dementia. They had brain scans, they showed dementia. Their doctors diagnosed them with dementia. What we did is we did a brain map with them. What we found out was the left hemisphere was actually, they're supposed to be in sync but the left hemisphere slowed down before the right hemisphere. So the communication wasn't happening. That causes anxiety, stress, fear, frustration, all of those things happening. The brain could not reorganize. So during this study, what we did is we said, okay, we're gonna for six weeks have them just use light, sound and vibration in the form of brain tap. They did that a minimum of three times a day, but most of them did it three times, I mean, three times a week, most of them did it three times a day because we had morning sessions, afternoon and evening, and they were getting a benefit. At the end of that, in the end of that study, that six week study, what happens was, what happened we found was that they took the test, they no longer tested or scored that they were, had dementia. They no longer had brain speed problems, their, their brain had synchronized. And as long as they continued to use the brain tap, they continue to get benefit. It's like brushing your teeth. If you wanna keep your teeth white and clean without cavities, you've gotta brush them. If you wanna keep your brain functioning at peak levels of performance, you've gotta stimulate it, you've gotta use it. Now, meditation alone can do that, 
But what we want to do is we want to shortcut that process, make it work even faster and better. And then with the therapeutic property of light, we accelerate the process. We find using sound alone, you can do it, but it takes about three times as long as just doing it with brain tap. Now, what we call this is axonal sprouting, which means, remember back a few slides ago, I said, you can't, you can't bring neurons back to life, but you can create new ones. Just like you can create new stem cells, you can rebuild your body from the inside out by visualizing and realizing those benefits, staying relaxed and stimulating with light, sound, and vibration. Now, most of you probably know uh, Bruce Lipton. He actually lives in New Zealand now, but uh, he's one of our teachers at Quantum University, and he talks about every molecule or substance has its own unique oscillating pattern, which can be measured in the electromagnetic field. And if you haven't read the book, The Biology of Belief, I'm gonna encourage you to get that book because everything I'm saying, Bruce Lipton knew about and he's been studying for over 50 years. He's the forerunner in this field. And what we know now is that every cell system and organ is vibrating. That's why we can do things like this. This is something that we created with the help of our Russian partners using heart rate variability. The reason we use the Russians, if you're asking, is the Russians own all the patents. They're the ones that use this for the cosmonaut program. Again, this isn't a course about HRV, but I wanted to show you how we can measure the nervous system. Because your nervous system can be measured, you can do different things and find out how it's adapting and changing. Now, I'm gonna break this down a little bit. We're not gonna go through every one of them. It would take longer than we have. But as you can see on the left, when you, when you look at this, the first scan that's on the left and the second scan that's on the right, you can see the, um, on the screen the different colors and what's going on. But I'm gonna break it out so you can see it a little bit easier. Now, why does somebody need brain tap and what's happening? First of all, if you haven't done it already and you're wondering, just go online and hit hashtag brain tap. You're gonna see movie stars, UFC fighters, um, Olympic athletes, they're all using brain tap for recovery and they're all talking about it because it creates energy. ATP, remember, it's the currency of the body. Without it, we can't heal, we can't rejuvenate. Um, so it doesn't matter what supplements you're taking. If you don't have the energy to break those supplements down, if you don't get out of the stress cycle, your body will just eliminate them. Number two, when you use this, you're more present, which means everything you do, you can do it better because now you don't have that stress as a interference in what you're doing. And when we talk about time optimization, what we're really talking about here is getting deeper sleep, better sleep, that's allowing you to detox the brain and improve the quality of your sleep. So I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. When we talk about energy, here's an example. This was a doctor that we evaluated at one of our, one of our shows that we do when we go to trade shows. He came to the booth, he was at 40%. Believe it or not, that's pretty good because this was in the afternoon. And we're all, it's natural around two o'clock to have a low phase of energy because the body's temperature drops. So a lot of people go out and get their coffee, they go and get their stimulants, but why not do a brain tap session or a light and sound session or a meditation? Well, what this doctor found was after their light and sound treatment, which was the slide I just showed you before, I'm just breaking it out, showing you bigger. He went from 40% electrical activity to 88%. This means the electrical function in the brain the way in which those neurons are wiring and firing, we were able to wake up the brain and all this person did was take a 20 minute nap, but they fed their brain light, sound and vibration. The body responded to it. And in this way, this was a very good response. They had 88% now of their brain capacity able to help them problem solve, improve or mend the body. All of these things make for a better life. Now also they're more present. This is heart rate variability. So that we wanna know about coherency. What we know is if there's coherency, which means our heart brain is communicating with our head brain, if there's good communication there, we're healthy. If we don't have good communication there, we're unhealthy. Heart rate variability is now the gold standard out there in the medical community that can show. It won't show you immediately, but it will give you, the, it will give you evidence before it shows up in physical space and time so you can start doing something about it. This doctor was only at 33% coherency, which means that would be like taking your data stream from the internet and cutting it down to 33% instead of 100%. You wanna have 100% flow through of information. 
after the session, they went to 96% coherency. This means they're more present, they're more available, their brain is occupying, their health is there. The outside stressors are no longer affecting this person's body. The heart and brain are now coherent, which means they're communicating back and forth. Now, when I talked about the brain and what happens, there's a delta hack that most people don't. Everybody wants to have a good night's sleep, but most people don't do it. In fact, right now, I'm, I'm being interviewed two and three times a day because of what's happened with COVID because they want to know, how can we get better sleep? What happens? Well, the best way to get better sleep is to de-stress the body so you can reach that deep level sleep. When somebody says, I sleep for six hours or eight hours, the amount of sleep you need is totally up to you to function. The reality is our military, the United States military says we only need four hours, but we know by sleep studies, what you really need is between six and eight hours, but everyone's a little different, but you need one hour of deep level four sleep. You need two and a half hours of REM sleep. So if you have a way to monitor your sleep, if you're getting those two numbers, the rest really doesn't matter. You're gonna have a lot of energy. You're gonna be thinking clear. You're gonna get things done. When we talk about why light, sound, and vibration is a time optimizer, is we know that if you get rid of the physical stress of the body, you clear out the mental stress of the mind, now your body can enter into a deeper state of sleep quicker and stay there longer. Because that sleep cycle goes like this. And every time we dip down into deep level four sleep or delta, beyond delta, there's epsilon. In that state of sleep, that level four sleep, your body at that moment, as shown in Scientific America, they wrote an article in 2016 at the May issue. What they found was that we have a lymphatic system in our brain. And that lymphatic system only opens up. So think about it like your toilet only flushes when you're in level four sleep. So your brain toxins only leave the brain during the level four sleep. Now, some of you out there, in fact, most of you, have probably had the experience in life where you woke up in the middle of the night, but you could not move your body. They call this sleep paralysis. You happen to wake up in the middle of one of these cleaning cycles. Now, these, this cleaning cycle should happen anywhere between five to seven times or more during the night because they only happen very quickly. You don't stay there very long, but when you're in that deep state, you're taken offline. Your physical body is offline. Your body is now, you can flush out those toxins. If you don't do that, you start experiencing something called leaky brain, brain fog, cloudy thinking, all the negative headaches. You, we need to clear out those toxins. Remember what I said at the very beginning. There's only three reasons why your brain isn't functioning at its optimum level. Thoughts, traumas, or toxins. So we can clear out the toxins. We can, re, we can reestablish the, the trauma. We can rebuild it with light. We, we can show that 30% improvement of blood flow to the area of the brain that's damaged in six weeks using light in the form of 633 nanometer light and 810 nanometer light. So this light frequency literally teaches the brain to rebuild itself by clearing out the toxins and bringing in lines for, for uh, nutrients. Because each time you do a light dose, you're actually creating a microcirculation change so this microcirculation is bringing more nutrients to the area. And anywhere there's a blood vessel, the body builds a lymphatic vessel because we're, when it's bringing in the supplies into the brain, it has to have a way, a supply line to bring the toxins back out because of met metabolism and the functioning of the brain. This happens every day, whether you do anything at all, your body's gonna create these toxins. Now, one of the benefits most people don't understand about meditation, relaxation techniques, especially when you add in light, sound, and vibration, is how it affects your metabolism. Metabolism is one of the forms we know. If you have a good metabolism, you have a healthy body. This person, which is the same doctor that we showed you the, the scan, when I showed you the big page scan, they have 120 units of energy. They're bringing 52 units in, and they're burning 68. This body is a fat burning machine. He's not overweight. This is good, but it's not a lot of energy. After he does his light and sound and vibration session, which takes about 20 minutes, feeds his brain light, resets and recalibrates his nervous system, he's now up to 363% metabolic units. He's bringing in 149 now, and he's using 214. This is a highly functioning, healthy nervous system. If you have a highly functioning 
healthy nervous system without stress, you will not gain weight. Your body will regulate itself and you'll have plenty of energy. So what I'm saying to you is you don't get the energy from the food. Almost every person that I talk to says, oh, I'm hungry, I need some food, I need some energy. They eat a candy bar, they get energy. There's no energy in that candy bar in one minute. It would take anywhere between two to four hours to take the energy from that candy bar and break it down and make it energy for your body to use. But there's psychological energy. Just the thought of having it in that bump of sugar is going to cause the body to trick you into thinking it has energy. And then of course that cycle they call the sugar blues happens. So we don't want that. We want to use the electrical system. When you use the electrical system, you have infinite energy. If you use the biological system, it's finite. That means every four to six hours, you've got to eat food and do it. Now, I'm not saying you can go without that food, but you'll make better food choices when your energy levels up and you're feeling positive. When you're feeling negative and depressed, then people are drawn to those negative foods, the foods that actually feed into slowing down your metabolism. We want to speed up the metabolism, keep it functioning at its highest level. Now, when we talk about stacking your hacks, here's what we've talked about today. First of all, we've talked about epigenetics. The words that we use during our visualization techniques can affect up to 2,300 gene expressions, which means the words are very important. We use something called positive psychology. I don't believe in negative programming. In fact, if negative programming worked, we'd have empty prisons right now. But one of the biggest businesses in the world, unfortunately, is building prisons. That's crazy. It's not working. So stop the craziness. Let's teach these people how to think differently. We have binaural beats. Now, the way a binaural beat works is we're going to put a beat frequency in one ear, let's say 200 hertz, 210 in the other. Your brain is not going to hear the 200 or the 210. It's going to hear a phantom sound of 10 hertz. Now, the secret here is not just that you're listening to a uh, a 10 hertz frequency, but that it's changing. So our algorithms at, at BrainTap, we change and we mix all of this. Each of these different hacks that I'm talking about here, these health hacks, all work on their own. We put them together into one headset that transforms your life. So if you're using any one of these, you're going to get a benefit. We've just put them all together so it's easy to do it all from one place. We're going to use isochronic tones. We already talked about what those are, a waterfall, you can do this in your home. You can have a water running in your home. That's an isochronic tone generator. You can use white noise when you're sleeping. That's an isochronic tone generator. But the reason we mixed it in here is everyone hears differently. So if we layer in the binaural beat and the isochronic tone, now we've given the brain more information. And our brain loves information. It loves patterns. Even though you on a conscious level cannot understand the patterns, you have a cortical response, which means your primitive brain, that reptilian brain, can organize it and do it. If you've ever seen the movie uh, on, with, that showed uh, the, the autistic child or the savant, when they dropped the matches on the ground, and, they inst and uh, he instantly knew how many matches were there, that's because his brain was working in that category, in that way, mathematically, he was very quick. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just we've taken selective amnesia, which means we select what we're good at, what we're not good at. We believe we can't do those things, but what a savant can do, we can all do and remain emotionally plugged in so we can function in the real world. We, we call this neuroacoustic harmonics because we're going to use music. There's something that in the 70s they called the Mozart effect. You heard that right. Mozart effect. They found out that if they took children, put them in a room, played classical music, what they call broke classical music. They didn't teach them how to learn differently. They didn't teach them any learning strategies. The kids just got smarter. They were smarter because they triggered alpha. And alpha and theta are hypernesia states, super memory states. So if you want to trigger your super memory, get more alpha and theta going. And that's what light, sound, and vibration does in the form of brain tap. Now, we also have auricular therapy, which I've talked a little bit about before, but most people don't understand why do we put lights in the ears? Well, your ears, it takes anywhere between three to five minutes for blood to flow through your ears. If you've ever cut your ear and noticed how hard it is to stop that ear from bleeding, that's because of the pressure in the ear. The rest of the body, the blood flows through it every 45 seconds. But if we can take the ear and we can put that light dose in there, which we have nine LEDs, so we're light dosing, 
That blood, the hemoglobin in the, in the ear is absorbing those photons, circulating them through the brain, through the body. And when it, again, when it finds the cell that's in apoptosis, it immediately exchanges that, that photon, is absorbed by that mitochondria, kickstarts the Krebs cycle, and health and harmony begins again in the release of nitric oxide, which causes a natural healing effect to happen. When all of this is happening at one time, the person appears to be sleeping, but we experience a relaxation response. Most of you have heard of the fight or flight response, but before that there's called the freeze response. If you've ever driven up on a deer or a wild animal in, in, with your car, the first thing they do is they freeze and they look at you because they don't know what to do yet. Our nervous system does the same thing. It used to be that that would happen three to five times a week, maybe. Now it can happen three to five times before breakfast, especially if you're checking your cell phone or you're, you're worried about what's going on at work or you're worrying about the news. All of those things trigger this, this response. Now, this is something that most people really love about the technology because when you're doing these health hacks, you wanna know that you're getting a benefit. So we can, we can measure your nervous system against 10,000 other people of your same age bracket. So this is a person who's age of 62 their biological age is 57. They are actually functioning better than 5% of the people in their demographic. Now, after their light sign of vibration treatment, and we measured it, they went all the way down to 34 years old biologically, which meant they were better than 28%. They were scoring better than 28% of all of the people in their age group. So of course, you'd rather, you'd let, rather have a biological age of 34 years old than a biological age of 62. You can have an actual age of 62, but just as Wayne Dyer said, never let an old person inhabit your body. And we can measure that to tell you, hey, what's going on here? Now, I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared with you today, but really to experience light, sound, and vibration, you have to go and experience it. Now, the app I'm gonna give you, if you go to braintap.pro, it's totally free. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to put your credit card in there. Just put your information in. It's going to assign you um, a login and password, or you're going you're to put those in for yourself. You're going to get to use the app that in 2019 got the best health app. It was the top pick at the Consumer Electronics Show, which is a show in the United States where we feature our electronics. Back in 89, I was very fortunate. My very first light and sound machine that I, I was part of, six of us created it. It was called the MC Square. We won the award at the CS show of the best new gadget of the year. So it was nice going back in 2019 and getting this award for our BrainTap app, which you can see underneath me here. Now, we, we were featured in the news this year about 29 times. In Forbes magazine, this, this article that was written, it, it talked about uh, how every person who's under stress needs to be using this app. So it's free for 15 days. You get a copy of my book, Fly in Overdrive. There's no pressure. If you don't wanna do anything with it, at the end of 15 days, you just walk away and nothing will change. If you want an additional 30 days, there's an option for you to, to pay 99 cents. And you can have this whole thing for 45 days. Now, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. At the end of that time, you get to keep the book because it's gonna be downloaded to you as a PDF. You can read that in your Kindle reader or on your computer. And chapter four talks about the technology. But the whole book is really good. Remember, Thrive and Overdrive. It's gonna teach you how to navigate your overloaded lifestyle. I wanna thank you for tuning into my class during the summit, and I hope it helped you to understand that we have technology that can help you to reclaim your brain's function and your nervous system's activity, keeping you young at any age. So God bless you, I hope this helped. I look forward to seeing you being super successful in the next year to come, thank you.